As you saw there, and you heard there, the president wrapping up his news conference. This follows a report came out at 8.30 Eastern time this morning that the economy is booming. It's growing at a 4.1% annual race, rate, I should say. The president said, we are on track to hit the highest annual growth rate in 13 years. If it's above 3%, it's the best rate in 13 years. He said that the trade deficit has dropped by more than $52 billion. Didn't give a time frame for that, but he said that that was a one-off, that that was a big shot in the arm for the U.S. economy. Most important of all, the president and Larry Kudlow looked to the future. The criticism is that this 4% growth rate was recorded in just one quarter and we can't keep it up. The president said, not so. He actually said, it's going a lot higher. That's what he said. It could be substantially above 3% for the entire year. The next quarter, he said, that would be the third quarter of this year, that would be outstanding. That is his wording. Okay, big deal if you ask me. David Barnson is with us. He's with the Barnson Group. He's the CIO. And Tammy Bruce is with us right here in New York. David, I'll get to you in a second. Tammy... Mm -hmm. Um, I want you to compare and contrast what President Obama said about the economy and what President Trump's doing with the economy. Go. Yeah, look, uh, people will remember during the campaign in 2016 during the uh, carrier air conditioner problem where they were laying off workers and were going to leave the country. Uh, President Obama, uh, President, uh, well, then candidate Trump said he was going to change that. He was going to keep those jobs. He was going to keep companies in America. President Obama then made a speech saying, how, how is Trump going to do this? Does he have some kind of magic wand? There's no way that this can, can occur. That was the theme of his speech. And this is the difference between, it's not just Obama and Trump. It's, the de it's a democratic philosophy that relies on controls and regulations. They do not trust a free market because they don't trust the individual. I, I, President look, look. Trump is the opposite. He trusts the American individual. The conservative ideal relies on individual um, uh, foresight and power uh, and, and the free market. And that's the difference that you're seeing now. A Democratic Party that still is saying this can't last. It's because they don't understand the American dynamic. They don't understand the American will. And they think controls are the things that work. Clearly, that is incorrect. It's a sea change in the philosophy of economic policy. Exactly. I would say that. You know? Exactly. Okay. David Barnson, come on in, please, because the president was saying some very important things there about the future of the economy. The next quarter, that's the third quarter of the year, he said it's going to be outstanding. And he said, this is his expression, it's going a lot higher. 4.1% second quarter. The president says it's going a lot higher in the third quarter. What do you make of that? Well, I think the key uh, in that little segment was what Larry Kudlow said at the end, 9 to 10% growth in business investment the first half of the year. If all of this 4.1 was just export driven from the soybean issue and so forth, you could argue this thing was going to fall off into future quarters, but it's not. The business investment leads to that further productivity. I agree with Larry and the president that that leads to wage growth and other things that really have a big impact throughout the whole economy. But the whole piece missing to GDP growth that gets back to trend line during those slow growth or no growth Obama years was business investment, CapEx. Mm. The tax reform bill is working. On that note, the president said that in the end, about $4 trillion will come back from overseas. It will come back to America. That's the kind of business investment that you're talking about, David, and which the president was talking about. He mentioned that Apple alone, Apple, the computer company, would bring back $230 billion. That's just one company bringing it back. And that was because of the tax cuts. That's the shot in the arm that you're talking about, right, David? It is. And, and of course, the use of that proceeds for, for stock buybacks and dividends and other things are tremendous for investors. But I really want to make the point that what they're doing with the capital is also leading to further business investment outside of financial markets through the quote unquote real economy, that there is this reinvestment into machinery, into technology, into new hiring, and those things from repatriation and the additional monies they have from the lower tax rate. Those things are the shot in the arm, Stuart, absolutely. So having listened to what the president had to say, you think that that was a bullish speech on the economy and for the markets <laughs> yeah. too, right? 
Oh, a- absolutely. Yeah, that, that's, uh, my then, co- that's uh, really my question, David. OK, bullish for the economy, yeah. obviously, from what the man said and what was reported. But what about the market? Why isn't the, the market popping after that kind of news conference? Oh, well, you know this, Stuart. The market is a discounting mechanism. Meaning, it's always pricing in what it believes about the future. The market has been pricing in the entire month of July that this Q2 GDP print was going to be very good. So we have a big move up. We're a full 2,000 points now off of the lows back in March when I was sitting there next to you complaining about the trade war. So that's how much things have already been able to be priced in. And we have to keep it going. Business investment, CapEx, and profit growth, always yeah. and forever, profits. Gotcha, Liz. Really great points here. And you know what's really interesting? The exports number in that GDP number, right? Let me back up. Liz Peak pointed this out. It's a good point. The Financial Times this past week has been running out stories about how the Chinese respect President Trump. The officials there say he's thinking long term about rebuilding the manufacturing base so you have better high paying jobs. That money will be spent. He's not thinking short term. He's thinking long term. So when you see these trade deals involving things like liquid natural gas into the EU, that's our exports. That's our big, heavy machinery, high paying job uh, sectors. And, you know, so the, the, you're seeing Texas now. People in Texas are saying we could displace Iraq and Iran in being the biggest oil producers in the world. The oil sector is very important here in terms of those exports. That was a big win. 4.1% growth is a big win economically. Tammy, Mm. is it a big win politically for President Trump? It's got to be yes. Of course, yes. Uh, But mostly because every single day we're told by his opposition that it's impossible for this to even be occurring that this can't continue. They've been saying that from the beginning. Donald Trump is is the individual who shouldn't even really exist. He's like a unicorn to them. But every time he delivers, and it's consistent, and it's consistent because it, it proves that it's not a fluke. It's not from four years ago. It's now, it's his philosophy, it's the nature of the conservative ideal, and they can trust what's coming up. It gets baked into the market, but obviously, as we know, the economy a great deal is the optimism, is an emotional response by the individual and the consumer. Their view of the future is high. Their view of what's, what's possible has, has, has skyrocketed. And as a result, of course, they're behaving differently as consumers. So it's about the optimism, his consistency, and the legitimacy of what's going on. Uh, good one. David Barnson, uh, I just, maybe I'm picking a, a bone uh, or a fight here with the president. I am not, believe me. <laughs> uh, but he did say that on the issue of trade, David, we've been ripped off ripped off i think it is 800 billion dollars by the europeans ripped off that's a little over egg that, that's that's not quite right is it david no it's not and i understand the political language and i understand his uh uh extraordinary talent with uh using rhetoric to to impact the folks he's trying to talk to but you're talking to me as a finance and economics guy and of course we're not being ripped off when we buy things and they deliver things Okay, we gave them cash, they gave us product. That's not a rip-off. I am not getting ripped off by my barber when they cut my hair and I give them money. And yet I didn't trade anything with them. You see what I'm saying? So that's okay. I'm not trying to pick on the president either. I don't have the same view that he does about the philosophy of trade deficits. Uh, uh, Trade deficit dropping $50 billion is not the biggest thing happening economically. Trade deficits collapse during recessions. So the fact of the matter is that there was such great news on the trade side, and Liz referred to it a moment ago, the liquefied natural gas story. I've been talking to you about this for months. The EU, no one's reporting this except for, of course, Varney on Fox. The EU says that's where they want to start buying more from the U.S., liquefied natural gas. This is an energy growth story. The pipelines, our infrastructure are going to benefit. It's U.S. jobs. I think the president should focus on that because that's a real story. The other stuff, you, you know how I feel. Okay, I've got to wrap it up. David Barnson, thank you very much for joining us. We do appreciate it. Tammy Bruce, I My think we, we appreciate that.